Okay, it is not going to plan. There's not much space behind there. I think I'm going to do the old school way. I'm going to take the pump out and then get to the PRV from there. I think it will be a lot easier because there's not a lot of room down there. How nice is it today? I'm actually recording this intro on the day that this video is going out and ah, oh, work's gone quiet. Don't panic. It's meant to be quiet because if it's gonna be quiet, this is when you want it to be quiet so you can make the most of the weather. There's no point in being busy and not being able to enjoy this weather. It's fine being busy when it's silly season, when it's cold, dark, gloomy, grey, whatever. Can't be outdoors. But when it's like this, you don't want to be working. So if you're quiet like me and like pretty much everyone else, then don't panic. Just make the most of it because silly season is going to be back around the corner before you know it. I mean, look, we're already coming into May tomorrow, isn't it? I think, yeah, tomorrow I think is the 1st of May. So... We're already almost halfway through the year. Silly season's only a few months away again. And it feels like it's only just finished. So seriously, if you're panicking that you haven't got work in, don't worry, everyone else is in the same boat. And like I said in my short that I posted yesterday, there's going to be people out there who's going to be saying they're booked up until 2030 or, you know, 2200, whatever. Good. Let them be. It's better to not be a busy fool and actually enjoy the fruits of your labor because what is the point in just working constantly non-stop throughout the year what have you got to show for it at the end of it i used to have that mindset that i'm self-employed i've got to work i've got to work i've got to work but as my career has progressed in self-employment i've very quickly gone through the cycles and learned to realize and understand that work's not everything there's no point in going out and earning money if you can't then use that money to enjoy what you whatever you want to do so yeah guys don't panic enjoy it because it doesn't last forever and on that note don't forget to like and subscribe enjoy this video and i'll see you all soon right first job this morning got Worcester which I came to do a service on and it needed a repair so back here again I think two weeks later because I'd carried out the service here yeah, it was just before I was off with the kids for Easter and yeah best one is replacing there is an external one on this one already but it's still going up into the red when they run the heating luckily I've got vertical flu so access is good to get the vessel out but I also need to change the PRV on this and also the flow elbow. So, got the flow elbow, got the PRV, got the vessel, got uh, bits and bobs that I'm going to need for this job. We'll set up some lighting here as well, so I've got better light. And yeah, we're just going to crack on. All right, that's just the last dregs draining out. Expansive vessel has been recharged to get rid of whatever water was in there. That's been open. Make sure you open this because that will get rid of whatever water sitting inside the main heat exchanger. AAV has been open. Put it into service mode initially to get the diverter into mid position and then kill the power to it. So now that's drained out. First thing I think I'm going to do is, to be fair, I'll probably just do the vessel first because, or should I do the flow above? I don't know. I'll, uh, let's do the flow above first because it's right at the front here. We'll get that done. Then we can tackle the vessel. I think I'm going to start from top, work my way down because obviously, even though the vessel's up here, the connection is down there. So we'll start up here, get this done, then do that, and then I'll do the PRV at the end because that's not going to be fun, I don't think.
Uh, that's the old flow elbow done. Again, Worcester make it very fun to work on. Right, that bit's done. Now I'm gonna tackle the vessel. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the condensate trap out, disconnect the hose from there. And the hose that I've got connected onto this vessel is for the other style, so we don't need to use this hose because this one's got the straight connection. So we'll pull it out with the hose, move that hose onto this vessel, and then slide that vessel back in down the back. All right, that's the old one out. I didn't film taking it out because it's pretty straightforward in that sense. But just remember, when you do put the new one in, back there you've got that little bracket that it sits on and you need to make sure that the vessel hose goes in front of the bracket. Otherwise it will end up behind the plate, which I've done before. So you want to make sure as you slide it in, do this one handed, just make sure that vessel hose goes in front. So it's just sitting there for the time being. There we go. The hose has come exactly where it needs to be because if you don't it will end up behind the plate and then if it goes behind the plate you're stuck well you're not stuck it just means you've got to take it back out put it back in again it's not so much of a problem when it's a vertical flue but obviously if you or if you've got the boiler off the wall but yeah you just want to make sure you get that in grease that up pop that in there and then the prv I'm sweating, I'm, I'm already huffing and puffing. I haven't got to the PRV yet, so let's see what happens there. Okay, it is not going to plan. There's not much space behind there. I think I'm going to do the old school way. I'm going to take the pump out and then get to the PRV from there. I think it will be a lot easier because there's not a lot of room down there. Even the way the pipe work is orientated, there really isn't much space for me to get my hand. I'm struggling just to even get the clip out at the moment. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go in from the front, take the pump out and then go from there. Right, pumps are, I'm hoping the flow time adapter is okay. I've got one on the van. Should I change it or should I leave it? I don't know. I probably should change it, but I'm not going <laughs> And I know what's going to happen. I'm going to put it all back together and that's going to start leaking. But you know what? If that starts leaking, that's fine. I can deal with that. I've got the pump out. Now I can get to the PRV clip a lot easier, he says. It's easier doesn't mean it's, it's easy. Let's try these. It's because it's got that bloody dog leg on the bottom. Make it Worcester. Why? Why Worcester? Why? <laughs> no wonder people don't like your boilers. my uni light all right i'm gonna need two hands for this with a lot of perseverance the old one's out and I've got a new one so i'm gonna grease it up and pop that in all right let's try get this prv in i'm gonna do this real time i'm not gonna say anything that could potentially jinx it because the way this job is going right now sitting in there kind of sitting there right i'm gonna to have to move the camera out of the way because i need to literally get in from this angle so i'll come back to this once it's fitted 
Yeah, we're in. We're in. The cup's in. So as long as the cup goes on, you know that's gone in home all the way. And I always like to reuse the old clip because the new clip that they send is just this C shape, U shape clip. And I'm not confident with it. I don't like how it goes in because it goes, I always find when I fit these, it feels like it's gone in too loose. Whereas that one, where it's got the little dog leg on it, I know once it's gone in, like if you give that a tug, that is not gonna come out. Whereas this one, you give it a little pull and it will just come out. So, right, that's in. Now let's all put it back together. And let's uh, test the flow turbine adapter. Okay, that's all back together. Now, the moment of truth, the first thing obviously I'm gonna do is open up the cold and will the flow turbine adapter survive or will it leak? Okay. Well, it's looking okay at the moment, but I do have a hot tap running downstairs, so we're going to go and shut that and then leave it under full pressure and then we'll test it. All right, everything's back together. Water is on. We are at about a bar and a half pressure. I'm just keep it under test. Flow turbine adapter is looking okay as well. So I think that little gamble has paid off. All the other connections that I've touched all seem okay as well. All right, let's just vent out the main heat exchanger and then get this back up and running. All right, we are live and direct. Just had it in service low just to get the air out as well. No more air in the system. We're good.